Hey guys, it's Amina back again with another video. Uh, I should have been posting more often. I know uh, some of you know me. I'm kind of a procrastinator. This is what I do, but I'm back at it. I'm not going to stop. So I wanted to sort of reach out to everybody. And um, I know these are crazy times. Everybody's worried about their health and the financial situations and the whole world is going crazy. So I just sort of took this time to start researching a bit and learning about things that I, uh, I like and that will help me after this pandemic thing uh, sort of subsides. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna just follow up and touch upon what we talked about in the last video, which was the gold standard. These, these are topics that fascinate me and I like them very much. So this video, we're gonna talk about the banking system. So during these times, you see how much money the government is giving out. They're paying out like subsidies to businesses, personal, uh, EIs, it's just crazy. And you would think, where did this money come from? So I would talk about this. It's called the fractional reserve system. So most countries, as far as I know, are now working through the fractional reserve banking system. So let's start and we'll dive right into it right now. So last time we were saying that President Nixon, around the 70s, at the end of the 70s, I believe, he sort of stood up and said, you know what, guys, your dollar is not backed by gold anymore. And that was that. So basically your dollar now is strictly backed by trust. So as much as people trust in the system and trust in the United States as the ultimate power of the world, uh, that's how things start flowing. And right now is a perfect example of how these things are progressing. So, so that kind of has like a lot of implications uh, positive or negative, that's not what we're going to talk about today. However, uh, the thing is we need to learn how the system works and then play the game accordingly. So I never really knew any of this information and honestly when I knew it, it sort of blew my mind. It's kind of crazy. I thought it was like, this can't be right. That's impossible. But yeah, uh, when you start knowing these things, it sort of changed my behavior altogether and how I thought about money, about my job, about work, about studying, everything. So I'll dive into that right now and we'll take a quick look. So we're gonna talk now about the fractional reserve banking system. So this is the central bank, which most countries would have uh, in the States, they would call it the Federal Reserve. So the central bank goes out and prints some very impressive pieces of paper, which they call money and they come at a $1 million. So they printed a million dollars. They then send that million dollars to bank A, which is basically just a commercial bank that you and I go to, a regular bank. So now bank A would have $1 million. So according to the reserve banking system, they need to have 10% of this amount in reserves. So in case someone wants to withdraw or whatever the case is, so they would have 100K over here and in excess, they would have 900K to utilize. So they want to lend this out because they borrowed this money at interest. So they need to make money on it. So they're able to maintain. So comes, they have 900K now. So comes Mr. Jeff here and he has a business. So we'll call it business number one. Mr. Jeff needs money to build his business. He's an entrepreneur. He wants to open a business, he, want, he has workers to pay, he has rent to pay, all sorts of things. And he starts borrowing this 900K. So in his business, he starts paying off people, like he pays his rent and he pays his workers, which then use up his 900K. What happens to this 900K? Those people that got it, some, some nice people took 900,000 from Mr. Jeff, at which point they go and deposit into their bank, which is bank B. Seems quite simple, but then bank B, they got 900K now. What do they do? They put the required reserve because everything has to be legal. So comes in 90K in the reserves and then they have $810,000. I think the math works there in excess. Fantastic. What happens to this 810,000? Bank B needs to make money. So there comes uh, Miss Fancy over here. She has another business that she wants to operate. She's an entrepreneur. She wants to make money. So she goes to bank B, which then lends her the $810,000. She repeats the process. She has a business, she has expenses to pay, and she pays out this 
and 10,000. And what happens is this 810,000, where does it go? It goes to the bank. So goes the bank C. I hope this is starting to make a little bit of sense, but then 810,000 go to bank C. What do they do? Exactly, 10%. They keep it right here in the reserves and the excess. As you can see now, this cycle could be repeated almost infinitely from this simple $1 million. So let's look at it because this is crazy. This is insane. Like you see how much money is created. So they only keep 10% lend out 90. This 90, they keep 10% lend out another 90. The other 10%, it goes infinitely to almost an area where this $1 million from the central bank is almost expanded by another $9 million. So the bank created $10 million out of thin air. Do you understand? Like this guy, he printed a fantastic $1 million. In a matter of, I don't know how long, let's call it a couple of months, it's now $10 million. Where do they get this from? How is this created? It's literally nothing. It has no basis. There is no gold to back it up. It's only because Mr. Jeff, Miss Fancy, Mr. X, they all have a business. They want to run it. They have things to sell and there's people that are buying. So it's basically all just a circle of trust. If anything in this circle fails, the whole system collapses because it's based on nothing. It's just like a house of cards. Okay, so let's just recap this madness a little bit. Let me just flip this amazing board right here. All right. Okay, so the, the current system structure is entirely built around one thing, debt. That's, that's it. That's the only thing about this system that makes it continually run is that the money keeps flowing. So if you know that the entire system is built around debt, so interest, inflation, and unfortunately bankruptcy are literally built into the system. It's a cycle, it has to happen. It has to go up, it has to go down. Because look at it this simply, this is the, the nice central bank that did us all the favor of printing the dollar. It loans it out at interest to the bank you go to. So literally first thing that comes out, it's already in debt. Like this bank is already in debt, which he then, what does he do? He just adds more interest to it because he wants to make money and he gives it to you and me and everybody, which then we go about and run around in circles and do our business or other people are like working nine to five slaving away just to make that money. So where does this interest come from? What about this interest? Where does it come from? you like, when I ask this question, the answer is literally just print more money. So this guy's gonna be like, where's my interest? Oh, we don't have it. All right, let me print you more money. So they're literally just printing more to keep this interest. So it's a cycle. The only thing that'll make it keep going is you and I keep working, slaving away just to pay this interest so this guy can pay that guy and that's it. That's unfortunately what it is. Uh, the way I would look at it is you are little, when they say the rat race, I know it sounds like a hypothetical scenario or it's just like a fancy way of, no, it's literally a rat race. You are running around trying to fetch random things that someone hypothetically printed and he's asking you for interest. So what do we do? We could whine about it, we could cry, we could revolt in the streets. I mean, when I thought about it, yes, it's infuriating, but what I thought, okay, let me just play the game. So I learned the rules and now we need to play the game. Okay, so this is what triggered me. I literally started reading about finance and all that uh, probably the end of 2018 when I got very interested and I really wanted to know more. So I'm gonna invite you guys to join me on this journey and we'll learn together and I'll try and share whatever uh, things I learned because literally my life flipped around once I started playing the game according to the rules available as opposed to the rules that I think are available. So in the next videos, as in general, we're gonna talk about how, what are the rules of the game, how to play the game, and investing, what types of investments there is. I did some very good investments and very terrible investments as well. So I'll share all of this with you guys. Please, if you don't mind subscribing, that'll be fantastic. And I've been told that hitting that uh, notification bell and a like would sort of help the algorithm. I know nothing about that, but some help would be appreciated. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll try not to procrastinate this time. 
Cheers. Stay happy, stay healthy. We'll see you next time.